Hello everyone, this is Teresa Benson, Product Marketing Manager here at Redline Controls, and today we're going to work with the data match and mismatch alarms. So I've got three tags here, two are integers and one is a flag tag. The flag tag we'll use in a future episode, but for today what we're going to do is use this val tag. It's a value that we're going to define as being between 0 and 10. It will change once a second. It'll go up to 10 and back down to 0 and back up again. And then we'll create a set point somewhere in between 0 and 10. And if the value equals the set point, we'll see a message that says the value equals the set point. And then we'll see what happens if we put in a data mismatch alarm. All right, so let's go ahead and first set up the changing value of this val tag. In our editing pane, I'm going to go to general and I'm going to use one of my favorite formulas for testing out changing values on a display page and that's get up down data. It's a function that we have built into Crimson. Um, I want it to change once a second so I'm going to use the current time as my trigger for uh, this value to change and I want it to go between 1 and 10. So the get up down data formula means I do n plus 1 which means I go to 11. All right so now my value is set up to go between 0 and 11 once a second. The set point I'm going to make a data entry tag on our uh, display page and that's where I'll actually set the set points. So let's go ahead and uh, set these up real quick. Let's make them just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to click on larger font. I could also go into properties and change the font size there. I'm going to just copy this formatting over and then I'm going to create this as a data entry tag. I can either, you saw that blue, I click on it once and I can click right here and that will turn it into data entry. I can also go into its properties and choose operation data entry here as well. Now let's go ahead and put an alarm primitive up on the screen. We haven't actually set up an alarm yet, but I want you to see where this is located. So in the resource pane, I went to primitives and I'm going to come down to the system primitives. And in this case, I'm choosing the alarm viewer. As soon as I drag that over, I want to make it a little bit bigger. And we can look at the properties of this really quick. For today's exercise, we're going to stay on this option options tab. We want to show the time that the alarm occurred and we can choose the colors for our alarm. In this case, let's have the active alarm remain red, but rather than navy for our weight accept, let's make it a light gray. So it really emphasizes that this is the active alarm. And in the case of weight accept, what that means is an alarm event occurred. It is no longer true, but we want to let the operator know that it did happen. And when uh, no alarm is active, we want to see the words no active alarms. The formatting of which occurs here. So I can make this a blue background and now that's what we'll see. I'm going to keep it that nice green that we had before. Click OK. Now let's set up an alarm on our value data tag. So I'm going to come here and in the editing pane I'm going to come across to alarms and I will choose data match. What data do we want to match? In our case, we want to match the set point. So I come to resource pane, click and drag. The value we're comparing against is set point. Now, when we send this to our database, it will be at zero because we haven't given it an initial value. We aren't assigning it a value through a Modbus register or through a program. And so zero is going to be our comparison point until we use data entry to change that value. The next thing we want to do is give some diagnostic information to our operator in the form of the event name. The event name is what will appear in the alarm primitive we just created, as well as the text that would appear if you were going to send an email when there's an alarm event or something like that. So I am going to say value uh, equals set points. 
All right, this may include a diagnostic code of some kind that, that refers to something in a manual, if that's what you want it to say. And the other thing I want to draw your attention to is this accept. I'm going to leave this as manual. Remember, in the alarm primitive, we have that wait accept. So what happens is when this is true, it will be read, but if it's occurred and then hasn't been accepted or noticed by our operator, it'll stay on the screen, but it will turn gray. Let's go ahead and send this to our HMI, come back over here, and we will see that right now the value doesn't equal zero, so no active alarms, but as soon as it hit zero, it popped up, turned red, which was meaning it's active, and now it no longer matches zero, so that went to gray. If I want to accept this alarm, I click here and choose accept. And we're back to no active alarms until the value reaches the set point again. All right, so that's how that works. Let's go ahead and see what happens if instead we do data mismatch. And we're gonna say does not equal set point. All right, um, I'm going to leave this as manual and we'll see what that looks like. So now it should almost exclusively be true from the very beginning. So this whole time it's going to stay red because it does not equal the set point. I can change this number. Maybe I change it to five. We will see it go gray for just a moment and then back to red because for that one moment it was no longer true, but it had happened and we want our operator to know. So now let's say I accept it while it's true. All right, that was a third color option you'll remember in here. If I go to display pages, properties for the alarm viewer, and that's that accepted olive. So we can see that when it's active, it's red. When it was active, is no longer, and we're waiting for the operator to accept it, it's gray. And then in this case, if it's still in active condition, it will turn that olive color. So that's it. That's data match and mismatch alarms. We'll build on this in the ex next episode when we talk about triggers and their relationship to alarms.